Look, anatomy is polarizing. Some medical students love it, but let's be real, most medical students hate it. But here's the thing, it can be painless. In fact, anatomy can even be fun if you study it properly. Here's how I studied it, what I would do differently, and what I would recommend for you. What's going on guys? For those of you who are new here, my name is Kevin Jabal, physician entrepreneur based in Las Vegas, formerly in plastic surgery. Love it or hate it, anatomy is a foundational component to your medical training. At a fundamental level, you need to understand what the human body is, the various organs, the various structures, and how they relate to one another. Even if you're not going into surgery, having an understanding of that is still critical to physiology and pathophysiology. Let's say you're an IM doctor and the general surgeon is explaining to you that they resected the ileum from a Crohn's disease patient. Now, if you didn't really know your anatomy, you'd be like, yeah, hold up, what? Part of the small intestine is that? How much is remaining? How does that influence their nutrient absorption? It just wouldn't be good. So here's how I studied anatomy. I used four primary methods. First being textbooks, of course. This was my textbook of choice, the theme, Atlas of Anatomy. I use this throughout medical school as well as residency. It's my favorite anatomy book, but there's of course Gray's, there's Netter's, of course the two classics, and then Snell's Clinical Anatomy is another one that a lot of medical students swear by. You can find links to all of them down in the description. Number two is gonna be anatomy apps, the 3D anatomy apps on your phone, tablet, computer. The two that I used were Essential Anatomy and Complete Anatomy, and I'm sure there's a lot of other great ones that are available now. If you have a suggestion, leave it with a comment down below so others can learn from your experience. Number three is flashcards, and because I'm just old school like that, I bought the actual physical Netter Anatomy cards you can get on Amazon. And they were okay, I'm not gonna lie. I preferred using Anki. I made my own flashcards with image occlusion, but you can also use pre-made decks with Anking, with 100 Concepts, with Michigan Deck, and so on. And number four is, of course, real life with a cadaver. Now, before we dive into each type, I want to emphasize that most people think learning anatomy is just rote memorization. It is a lot of memorization, don't get me wrong. But if you incorporate clinical understanding, clinical significance with that memorization, it's gonna make so much more sense. It's gonna be so much easier to learn, trust me. You're gonna be tested on not just what a structure is and not just what a structure does, but also the deficit if that structure is injured. So once you memorize the brachial plexus and its various innervations, let's say a patient comes in with an injury at a certain cervical spine level, you're gonna know what exactly their deficit is. And this is broadly applicable. Like take the cranial nerve exam. So if a patient can't accommodate to light, then you're thinking about the afferent, you're thinking about the efferent, and you're incorporating that clinical significance, which actually makes the anatomy stick. All right, now let's break down each of the methods. So first being textbooks, these are gonna be your gold standard. They are the most thorough, the most reliable, the most accurate. The issue is that of course they're two-dimensional and they're not inherently interactive. So I find that for students who struggle with spatial reasoning, these 2D textbooks aren't gonna be as helpful. Still, they should always serve as a reliable reference. All right, next up, anatomy apps. They're interactive, they're beautiful. I think because they're so impressive visually, we overemphasize and put too much weight on their utility. They're not the end all be all. In fact, they're not always totally accurate, which I learned the hard way. So I was rotating on an away rotation. And again, I wanted to specialize in hand as a subset of plastic surgery. So I'm working with this hand surgeon and he pimps me on the extensor proprius indices and whether that is radial or ulnar to the extensor digitorum communis. Now this is a really small detail, but again, if you wanna go into hand surgery, this is relevant, this is really important. And I remember closing my eyes, thinking to what I remembered from the app, and I was like, oh yeah, I got this. And I gave my answer, I remembered it correctly from the anatomy app, and that app was wrong. Not the end of the world, but these apps are like 95% accurate, they're gonna have a few inconsistencies here and there. Next up, flashcards. So. Back when I was in med school, back in the uh, 1900s, there weren't any pre-made decks to use. So I made my own cards and I actually really enjoyed doing so because I wouldn't make cards on everything. I would only make cards on the things that I really struggled with, things that were hard for me to remember. So I would incorporate mnemonics very reliably and the more ridiculous and outlandish they are, the more they're gonna stick. All these years later, I still remember the external carotid, which was some anatomists like Others prefer SNM. The cool thing too about making your own flashcards with Anki is that you can use the image occlusion plugin and I have a video on the Med School Insider channel, link to that in the description, that makes it super quick, super painless. It's like a couple seconds to make flashcards on the image that you want, especially if you know all the, all the shortcuts to take a screenshot, etc., etc. And the fourth one is actually learning from real life. I would say this is the most valuable way to learn anatomy. There's two methods here. If you're preclinical, it's gonna be primarily your cadaver lab. And then when you're in your clinical rotation, it's gonna be in the actual operating room. Now, preclinical, 
Studying in the anatomy lab with friends, not just during your assigned classroom time, but even after hours, I thought was so valuable. We would bump some Kanye West and me and like two guys would go down there and we would go through everything that was gonna be on the practical and teach each other. It was essentially us incorporating the Feynman technique and doing so was a very active form of learning. It was also a good break from just like the constant textbooks and primarily studying solo. It was being more social and interactive. We had music, it was fun. I have fond memories of being in the anatomy lab. We would go through each structure, ask each other, quiz each other, and then also incorporate clinical significance. And those were the moments when I actually learned the fastest and things stuck the most. And if you get the chance, I definitely recommend you become an anatomy TA in your fourth year and you'll, you'll be TAing for the first years. You'll be doing the pro sections, you'll be teaching them and it really solidified my understanding of anatomy prior to entering residency. Now in your clinical years, you should be actively testing yourself in the operating room, like, like in your head, not out loud. And as you see the surgeon enter the abdomen or the layers of the scalp, you know, you're not doing it yourself, you're suctioning or you're retracting, but you should still be quizzing yourself and trying to identify the various structures you see or the various layers that you're entering through. And if you don't remember something, that's fine. Don't, I wouldn't really recommend you ask the surgeon that won't really make you look good in, in your evaluation but you can make a mental note of that to check it up later. Say, hey, you know what? I forgot the layers of the abdominal wall. I need to refresh on that later. All right, so here are my recommendations for learning anatomy. First is to embrace the messiness. A lot of our learning in medical school is more or less straightforward. We learn in lecture, we do a few boards and beyond videos, we do some pathoma, we do some practice questions, and then repeat to the next thing. Anatomy is not so linear. It's a little bit more messy. So you're gonna be jumping between the textbook, the cadaver lab, the 3D anatomy apps, the, the various things you're gonna be hopping between them. It's supposed to be messy, that's okay. Number two is to make the most of cadaveric dissection. It's a tremendous opportunity. You won't get it again in your medical training. And the thing here is, yes, in your actual cadaver labs, when you have to be there, when you have to dissect through things, be present, don't just be watching. Like even if you're not interested in surgery, don't just watch and, and be in the sidelines. Get involved, be active, you'll learn much faster. But then also don't be afraid to come in after hours, assuming your school allows that. To, to learn and quiz one another prior to your practicals. That is the most effective way to learn from my experience. Number three is to, of course, embrace active learning. With things like anatomy that are a lot of rote memorization, people think that, oh, just repetition, repetition, repetition. If you're just repeating and doing recognition rather than active recall, you're gonna have to do a lot more repetitions to actually get that information solidified into your long-term memory. And number four is to use high quality resources, which brings us to KenHub, the sponsor of today's video. KenHub is a single comprehensive resource to learn anatomy. If the scattered approach to learning anatomy is a bit overwhelming, a bit disorganized, then KenHub actually takes the guesswork out. They streamline the whole process of learning anatomy. Because remember, you can't just focus on a text, but you can't just focus on cadaver lab. And what KenHub does is they actually combine various ways of learning anatomy in a single page. It's super streamlined, it's really easy to use. They start with a very easy to understand, clean, well laid out videos that explain the anatomy. After that, you reinforce the information immediately by quizzing yourself using active recall. Next, you can further refine your understanding with their atlas, which has high quality images. And then you finish it off with a summary of the anatomy you learned. Now, who do I think KenHub is for? If you're a pre-med or a preclinical medical student in your first two years, then KenHub is definitely gonna be valuable to you. If you're a third or fourth year, and let's say you're specializing in orthopedics or in plastic surgery, you need to know the nuances about like the, the tendons in the hand and whether they're radial or ulnar, then it's not gonna be as well suited. But again, for pre-meds and preclinical medical students, I think it's a fantastic resource. Check it out today. You can get a 10% discount by using the link in the description. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If there's anything I missed when it comes to learning anatomy and you wanna share it with the other viewers, then please do leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, then check out this one or that one. Much love and I'll see you guys there.